Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at this P-Bandai kit, and it's a great one for all you Wing fans out there, and especially me who prefers the Endless Waltz designs. This is the Premium Bandai Master Grade Ultron Gundam, and it is very cool looking. So we got some P-Bandai style monochrome box art there on the front, but it is a really cool artwork there of the Gundam, rather than just an actual like uh, photograph of the kit. I don't think it is, I think it's actual artwork. Isn't it? Not a CGI image of the kit. Anyway, it's a really cool version of the uh, Shenlong Gundam, of course, the Endless Waltz version, and it's uh, the one that we saw in the movie Square Off against the Wing Zero Custom. Very cool design anyway, so let's just go ahead and get right into it. Speaking of the Wing Zero Custom, there you can actually see it down there at the bottom of the box art, but some pretty cool box art. Not really too much else to see around the outside of the box with this being a P-Bandai kit, so let's just get ahead and get it opened up here. Inside you're gonna have That's 11 bags of runners and our instruction manual, which features a color version of the box art with the white background there. So very cool looking on the front. On the back looks like your decal guide here, because we are going to have some included water slide decals with this, just like the other P-Bandai Masquerade Wing kits. That's great news, because these are basically like Verkaz, essentially, just without the Verkaz title on them, so it's very cool. Got the painting guide down there at the bottom as well for our little pilot figure as well of Wufei in the cockpit and the standing version. In the front, we've got the parts list, very typical for that. And a no center page with like more artwork or anything, basically it's just your standard instructions going through the construction of the kit and the weapons and everything, how to use those big dragon arms there at the end. And that's basically it, so not a whole lot much else to see in there. Let's just go ahead and get right into the runners. All right, so we do have some foil stickers with this, basically for the eyes, a couple of cameras there, and these little black ones, not exactly sure where those are gonna be going yet, but pretty inconsequential for the foil stickers for this. Then we got the beautiful water slide decals for this, looking very nice. You have a couple of these uh, like Chinese characters there for the main markings, and the rest of it's just kind of generic caution markings and stuff in white and red. We got PC205 for some polycaps here in gray. And like with the other recent Masquerade Wing kits, we've got our generic frame runners of XA and XB. So these are in gray ABS plastic. There's XA, you got hand parts, other frame parts on there. XB, we've got two of these for some more frame parts for the arms and legs, all in gray ABS plastic. And our A runner here is in four colors. We got one clear part up there at the top, a couple of yellow parts over here on the side, some black parts there throughout the center, and then some green down here across the bottom. Runner B in a clear fluorescent green is our effect parts for the double beam trident. Runner C1 getting into some of our white armor pieces, including our pilot figures there on there as well. We also got runner C2, which is a copy of this half of the runner here. Runner D1 is in a little bit darker green from the green color that we saw on the A runner. This is some more armor pieces, and we do also have runner D2, which is a copy of this section of the runner here. Runner E as well is going to be in that darker green color, which is going to be our primary green color. Basically, the lighter green parts that we saw on the A runner are kind of our lighter accent pieces. Runner F is a few more different frame pieces here in gray. These are in polystyrene plastic. Runner G, however, is in ABS plastic for some different pieces for the frame of this particular kit. This is also in gray, of course. Runner H getting into some of the weapons parts for the big dragon head on the arms. This is runner H1, I guess I should say, in that darker green color. We've got two of these, and I was a bit concerned if they were going to reuse parts from the old 100 scale kit, but that's definitely not the case, as these runners are also from 2015, when this kit first came out. And then runner H2 is in gray here for our couple of pieces for the double trident. There you go. Runner I1 here in yellow is the parts for the V-fin and some claw parts. We've also got runner I2, which is going to be a copy of that runner minus the uh, V-fin. Runner I3 is some more white parts, including new seated and standing pilot figures. So these are going to be different from the ones that were included with just the standard release kit, actually, I guess. And then runner I4 is a copy of that runner minus the pilot figures. And last but not least, runner J here is some red parts for basically all the extendo arms. We got two of this J1 runner and then two of this J2 runner, which is just giving you more of those. So you'll have plenty of extension pieces. So there you have it, guys. Oh, there's all the pieces. Let me go ahead and get it put together and we'll see how it looks. All right, guys, and here it is looking very cool. I gotta say, you just gotta love the look of those giant, massive dragon head arms that's got there on the back of its arms. And I love how like the main body itself doesn't really have anything really too outlandish or large. It doesn't have like huge shoulder arm or anything like that. It doesn't have anything that's for like a big, massive backpack or anything or big massive pointy knees or toes like the death side or something like that. The main body is actually pretty simple and I don't know just kind of like streamlined or any something like that and it fits for like the martial arts style of the suit so I think the mobile suit design is great on this one and then just those massive weapons on the back of the arm. 
just looks super cool, but we'll see how they hold up uh, under their own weight here in a moment. But for now, let's just go ahead and take a look at all the accessories and everything you get included with this. First off here is your pilot figures. Now this is the new one that's included with this kit where he's wearing the uh, military uniform he wore in the Endless Waltz movie. And then, but you do have the old one included in here as well if you do prefer that. You got both of these included in here. We've also got our standard action base adapter here. And then our swappable fingers for the hands to make either closed fists, open hands, or holding hands. And you have two types of holding hands here. One set has the little peg inside there and one set does not. Now this will go for our twin beam trident, which does have a little hole there where you'll plug that handle into it if you want. Of course, we've got our two effect parts for this that will plug into there and look very nice. There's that, a good size and good look for those. And if you want to plug this onto the back of the Gundam, you have this alternate piece here, which you can swap out for that bit right there in the center of the backpack. If you can pry that out of there, you can swap that out for this piece and you can store the trident on its back. And for the dragon arms, we have a couple of stands for those to help uh, keep the heads up, to help support the weight. And then we have a couple of extensions. So basically you have 10 of these extension pieces, so you can use these all connected together like that for one long extension, or you can separate them into five and five, or two and eight, or however you wanted to do that. But let's go ahead and start off with just some articulation here. Now the head will go up to there, which is quite nice. You can see there's the stickers there for the eyes and the head cameras and then all the way down to there, so very good. A little bit tricky to get at it, but that cockpit hatch does open. You've got the pilot seated up inside of there. And for our ab crunch, you do have a little bit forward and back bend there, side to side just a little bit as well too, and rotation. The shoulders will swing very far out to the front like that, so you have that part of the frame that will extend out the side. This little bit of shoulder armor on its own will move up and down like that. You can bring the arm up pretty far, all the way up like that, so very nice upward extension there for the arm. You can bring the arm up really far, so a nice upward movement there for the arm as well. And then you've got shoulder armor, which is kind of coming off a little bit there. Anyway, the arm will rotate there at the top. You got a double joint for the elbow here. The armor is kind of blocky, so you're really only able to get about that out of the elbow joint there, unfortunately. The wrist is just then on a ball joint. The thumb is also on a ball joint there. And as for the dragon arm, this will basically all fold out fold out like that. This part will fold down over the front of the hand and this part extends out like that. And now definitely weight is going to be an issue for that. He's having a little bit of trouble keeping it up. So it seems like you will definitely need to use the stands for this. Now also I'll just point out that on the little red bits up inside here, I'm already seeing some stress marks on that and it seems like a very thin little bit. So just be careful when you're moving these parts around because it seems like that could easily be broken it looks like. As far as the dragon head itself, here's where those other black stickers go in for like the kind of eyes of that. These parts will open out and extend forward like that for the claw bits. It looks very cool, very nice. And then for putting this on the base, that will just plug up right into the bottom of there like that. So that's how that's gonna be held up for posing. Now the unfortunate thing about this base is that the bottom is not on a ball joint. It really would have been better if these were like your typical kind of Megami device style bases where this part of the base is plugged down into a ball joint here. So then you can actually change the angle of this with this as it is, you can only have it just straight. So that means your posing for the dragon heads is limited to just having it just straight on and that's it. You can't have it at an angle or anything like that. So that's kind of disappointing. And just going back around to the backpack real quick here, nothing moves on this. You just got the thrust bells and a nice little bar detail up in there. So the backpack is small, simple. It looks really nice though. Our skirt armor all moves on its own. So the front skirts, the side skirts, and just like with the death scythe, I feel like the side skirts can come apart very easily. So just be careful when you're moving those around. Then around here on the back as well too, the back skirts are individually articulated, so you can move those as you need. For the legs, we got some rotation there at the top. You can bring that very far up to the front there, it looks like. You got a nice double joint there for the knee. The knee armor is separated, but it doesn't like stay on the front of the knee there. Then when you bend that, you can see it does still bend down. Our ankle armor, once again, is suspended between the double ball joints between the lower leg and the foot. So that'll just kind of move around as you move the foot around. So that'll go a little bit to the side to side like that, up and down, and that toe does point down there as well. Up underneath the feet, you got full detail there also. And then here it is side by side with the Death Scythe. Now obviously it's not the Endless Waltz version here, so they don't necessarily match, but they are, do still look pretty cool together. Although the yellow colors are totally different, I think it would look cool if they were both in the same color of yellow, so anyway. All right guys, so there you have it. Not really a whole lot much else to say about the Ultron here. It's pretty simple. I mean, as far as accessories go, basically it's just kind of 
the dragon claws and the trident, which is very cool. I mean, it's got some cool accessories, but it's pretty minimal. It's not like it's got the uh, beam rifle, shield, other sort of typical accessories we see with a lot of Gundams. So it's very unique in that sense. Uh, the weapons loadout that it has is certainly different from a lot of other Gundams, which is very cool. And just as I was saying before too, I just really like the interesting proportions of it with it just being a pretty streamlined Gundam design with just these big massive weapons on its arm is pretty cool as well too. And whilst just posing the kit straight out the box can be a little bit of a challenge, definitely once you've tightened up some of the joints there in the arms and you know, maybe even put this on like a custom base or something like that, modifying the stands or custom building something in order to help keep those dragon heads up better than what's the simple ones that are included in here might be a good idea. But once you've got that sorted out, it's definitely gonna make for a very cool display piece with those big dragon head arms on there. But that's going to be it for today, guys. If you do have any other further questions, of course, feel free to ask down below. And as always, big thank you to USA Gundam Store for making it all possible, guys. Check the link in the video description to their site where you guys can save 10% off everything there using my coupon code ZACORELIUS10. And of course, thank you guys for your support as well, too. Liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all of that is greatly appreciated as well. So until next time, guys, hope you're all having a great day. I'll see you all later. Bye, everyone.